This is part one of a series of short video tutorials focusing on technical aspects of gene drive technologies. In this short tutorial, we'll learn about the basic concept of gene drive. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to explain the meaning of the term gene drive or drive as understood by most geneticists. You'll also be introduced to other ways in which the term is currently used. While different and a bit less genetical, these other uses of the term are common and meaningful. Let's begin by thinking generally about patterns of inheritance. Say a family tree, for instance. Have a look at this family tree. In generation one, the man with a single blue form of a gene marries a woman with the white form of the same gene, and they have a son who inherits the blue form of the gene from his father. He now marries a woman with the white form of the gene, and they are planning on having a very large family. How many of their anticipated 12 children should they expect to have the blue form of the gene? Think about it for a minute. Let me give you some choices. 100%, half of the children, 25%, none of the children, or perhaps you're not sure. Well, based on the information I provided, you should expect that half of the children will inherit the blue form of the gene. Think of it this way. If the blue form of the gene was responsible for maleness, which in humans is associated with the Y chromosome, then this question could be rephrased. How many of their children are expected to be boys? Again, 50%. This pattern of inheritance is well understood and is expected for most genes and chromosomes in sexually reproducing plants and animals. And that includes insects. Do you understand why we expect 50% in this example? Well, let's have a look. Humans have two sets of chromosomes that comprise our genomes. We obtain one half of our genome from each of our parents. When we reproduce, and during the process of producing sperm or eggs, we will divide our genomes in half so that we contribute to exactly half of our children's genomes. Our partner will contribute the other half. That splitting process occurs during the formation of sperm and eggs and is illustrated here with just a single pair of the 23 pairs of chromosomes that humans have. The splitting process involves the segregation of the chromosome pair into two cells. The same thing is simultaneously occurring with the rest of the chromosomes so that the resulting cells contain exactly half of the original genome. This process of dividing genomes in half occurs for all sexually reproducing organisms and accounts for the inheritance pattern with which we are most familiar. Transmission of chromosomes in this case is fair and unbiased. Half of the sperm will contain half of the genome, say the half that includes the blue form of the gene in our example, and the other half of the sperm will contain the white form of the same gene. But there are variations of this process that result in different outcomes. Take a look at this pattern of inheritance. In this case, the blue form of the gene is not transmitted to half of the progeny as expected, but instead is transmitted to all of the progeny. In this case, the transmission of the blue form of the gene is biased, skewed. The blue form of the gene is exhibiting drive or gene drive, referring to the preferential transmission of that gene to the next generation. There are numerous components of genomes that show drive or gene drive. They can be individual genes, whole chromosomes, or other genetic elements such as transposons. Elements of genomes with these characteristics are actually quite common, and geneticists refer generally to these as selfish genetic elements because they selfishly enhance their own transmission at the expense of other genes or chromosomes. Geneticists have been aware of these skewed patterns of inheritance for a very long time. The first observations of drive were made in the early part of the 20th century. Today, with the development of sophisticated genetic engineering tools, it's now possible to assemble genes in the laboratory that display this drive characteristic when introduced into the genome of an organism. So genes, or so-called transgenes, can be engineered or assembled that display gene drive. We'll look at how skewed inheritance can occur in another lesson, as well as how they're being assembled in the laboratory. Let's conclude by considering some other uses of the term gene drive. I've used the term to describe a pattern of inheritance 
or a behavior of a gene or a chromosome, if you will. The use of the term drive in this way by geneticists dates back to at least the 1950s. But some use the term gene drive to refer to the thing that displays this bias pattern of inheritance, the gene or genes that are unfairly transmitted to the next generation. Some refer to gene drive as a technology. Some refer to gene drive as a system. These uses are understandable, but let me emphasize this, that gene drive does not refer to one thing, one technology, or one system. There are different genetic elements that can display drive, and there are different mechanisms that are responsible. For it.